Hey guys, so I'm sure you're probably wondering what happened with Lincoln and Amber. Now, if you missed part one of the video, probably go back and check it out, but Lincoln is a Timnay African Grey. I almost said Congo, because I'm used to our own African Grey crusty. Um, but he is a Timnay African Grey. He was at least 20 years old. Uh, we aren't for sure on his age. And his owner, Amber, um, was in her 80s, I believe, when we first met with her at her home. And it was a very interesting situation that we've never really encountered before. Although we do magic professionally. <laughs> uh, she expected us to do magic with the bird and perform a literal miracle and take what was a wild caught African gray um, and who has not been very handleable and try to make it so that this, we'll say 80 for a round number, this 80 year old lady try to make it so that she didn't get bit ever again and it was just really the expectation was a lot higher than we could do incredibly high based on a lot of like okay give us time we could probably make some good progress but based on what she needed done and the amount of time she needed it done and her capabilities everything came into play um that made it very very difficult so <laughs> and and i felt like the criteria kept stacking up against us, I guess, when we were there getting to know the whole story. And so, you know, as we were there trying to work with Lincoln and trying to see what her expectations were and what she wanted to be able to do with him, it started out by, by just her wanting to be able to move him around. Um, but then it kind of came to light that she said she couldn't afford to get bit. Uh, she couldn't afford to get bit anywhere. And that's pretty difficult when you have somebody who's not understanding the body language. So we were like, okay, we could use hands-off techniques. We could use all these different ways and methods so that she's not risking getting bit. But then it came to fruition that she's like, I can't stand for long periods. And what that actually meant was she couldn't stand for short periods. So just doing a five minute training session when we sat down and asked her and I just said, could you do five minutes of a training session every single day. Is that within your and, limitations? And then she couldn't really. And she couldn't. It wasn't wasn't realistic, I should say. I mean, so, maybe she's, she was capable, but it was probably more going on than we would know. So right? we tried figuring out, could we set up a station kind of in her home where next to the bird's cage, we could put a chair and she could do a training session there. But honestly, all the boundaries and limitations that came over us in this one in-home consultation were she can't get bit, she can't do the training standing, um, she can't interact with him for long periods, and he can't go anywhere like out of her control because she can't get him back. I, I think and what it, happened too was that the whole mood kind of changed halfway through the day, not even halfway through, pretty early pretty on in the early day. On. And we came to the realization that what she probably was wanting was permission to find the bird a better home. And I wish we would have realized that that's all that she wanted earlier because trying to troubleshoot and get around all these different facets of trying to make it work of what she wanted and, and switching directions to try to make it work and then trying to enrich the life that he had with her, it really did come down to her just seeking permission and help in finding this bird the right place to live out its days because she kept reminding us, which saddened me a ton, how her days were limited. And she had lost her husband previously and the bird was more her husband's. And you know, just the fact that she had tried to set it free outdoors and all the things that had happened were just, she called me out a lot in that in-home consultation and she just kept saying that I, I don't even remember exactly, but she just kept drawing attention to how I was feeling. And I, I am a very open book. Like it's very obvious how I feel what? in every situation. I don't, I'm not able to play along. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it was hurting me. It was hurting me seeing her hurt and then not understanding how to enrich the bird's life because I couldn't see her being part of it, I guess, is where my struggle was. And and when I realized that she just wanted that permission and that help to find him a place where he could thrive, um, it actually made it better because I felt like I can do something. Yeah. yeah, it was a relief. And I started reaching out to all of our contacts and I thought that you guys would be, at least be pleased to know that 
Amber had an amazing final day with Lincoln where they had amazing interactions. She did not get bit. Um, they got to sing and talk together and whistle and she got to understand some of the training concepts. She got to say goodbye and the amazing volunteers over at Naples Bird Sanctuary helped her get Lincoln into proper testing and he was adopted into the sanctuary over there and is thriving. So we were incredibly relieved, happy. Amber was relieved and happy. You know, one of the things I don't think people realize is um, and especially in Amber's case, what she had told us, she's like, I just wish he could go to a place where he's in an aviary with other birds like him. The problem with that is that although that sounds beautiful and it sounds like what nature would be, many birds are not in a situation where they could go straight from where they're at into that situation and be okay. Um, most likely there's gonna be conflict, there's gonna be phobias, that, that bird is just gonna go nuts being in that sort of area. And so the, the people that work in sanctuaries understand this, but often the people who don't, don't understand it. And it's something where a sanctuary really has to weigh the options and work with the bird to see, is this bird better off around other birds in an open aviary where it can fly? Again, Lincoln couldn't fly. He was fully flighted, yeah. but he had never flown before. <clears throat> he was completely atrophied. He couldn't fly. Um, so putting him in a scenario where he's actually more vulnerable than the other birds is not ideal because he can get picked on and hurt and injured really easily. Well, so, that's the thing about nature too, right? They'll, they'll kill the weakest link. And so it wouldn't have been, you know, what we picture is like, oh, great, just put him in a big aviary. The people that have these large aviaries oftentimes have, you know, birds with missing toes because of fights and dead birds. And so um, we definitely had to help her find a place to, to rehome him that was going to be truly in the bird's best interest and not just what she pictured it to be. We needed the sanctuary to also look at it and say like, hey, this is actually what's gonna be best for the bird. Yeah, and it's really cool. So those of you that have maybe never heard of the Sanctuary of Naples, go check them out. They have some amazing volunteers that make really cute art for them. There's a birdism on Instagram and she was amazing in helping us and getting in touch right away. She made all the trips for Amber, went, picked Lincoln up, took him to the vet for all of his pre-testing to make sure that he was healthy enough to go into the sanctuary, even kept him in quarantine for her and then finally introduced him to the sanctuary so thank you to the bird gardens of naples like amazing amazing people over there please go check them out and uh, support them and we wanted to just tell you guys the ending of the story because although it's probably not what everybody wants to hear um, it is a great reminder of making sure that you make the right choices and you're thinking ahead for the betterment of your bird in the future. So whether that's including your bird in your will, having some sort of research done ahead of time to know where your bird is going when you pass away, because most likely they will outlive us. Well, and it, and it could be something as simple as, we went into this in a pretty big rant on one of our podcasts, which you guys should definitely check out, and when it's time to give up on your bird. And although that's a pretty strong title for her scenario, really she knew that she just needed us to give her permission that it was okay and <clears throat> my whole point in that podcast is that it is your responsibility to give that bird the best life it can have and if that's no longer with you because you got married and the bird hates your spouse or you had more kids than you expected or whatever life throws at you right it is your responsibility to make sure that bird lives another level up, right? A better life than you can provide it. And that happened to be the case. And it was really hard to see that, but it, it serves as a really good reminder to, you know, have those alternative plans. And, and, you know, I think part of the challenge there is that she associated the bird with her husband. So every time she saw the bird, I think she experienced sadness and and there was a lot of emotions there for sure that made yeah. her decision harder. And you know, the rest of her family and friends didn't support her keeping the bird because she had gotten bit. She had these incredibly crazy scars. Um, she had gotten bit in the face, on the head. Uh, she was just saying how easily that she bleeds and all, just all the things. It was gruesome a few times and it was just because she couldn't give the bird the time it needed and the tools that it needed to live harmoniously together. They no longer could help each other in that way. And so it was hard to hear that she had no support system either. Yeah. She was just kind of stuck in trying to do the right thing by realizing it's not okay for that bird to be in the cage all day, every day. 
Um, but at the same time, when it came out, it was devouring her and she had a hard time putting it back in unless it was with, a, I think she used a towel and then that mitt. The people that you're giving that animal to, make sure that one, they want it and two, they're qualified. I think that those are two really important things because it would be really easy to just say, all right, when I go, birds go to my kids. Your kids may not want them. So make sure that you take those things into consideration. It is, again, it's your responsibility to make sure that that bird has a better life wherever you're putting it. And that could be a sanctuary, it could be, it could be a number of places, and it may be with your children, but it may not be also. Which actually <laughs> reminds me that one of our free flight students actually checked with her daughter to make sure that she was okay with her mm. buying her free flighted birds because she knew that all of her animals were going to her daughter and she's like, hey, I just wanna make sure, are you okay with this? Because it's not just me making the commitment, it's me making the commitment for you and are you okay with that? And that she cool. made sure that her daughter was on board with those purchases and those investments, um, knowing that it's most likely going to outlive her. And I thought that that was really, really neat. So it was actually, it took me by surprise, I forget when this happened, but Capri said when she moves out, uh, that right. she's taking Bondi and I I was like in my head I was like wait a minute that's my bird and then I and then I was like proud because I took a moment and appreciated the fact that she felt ownership over Bondi and was like I'm taking my bird I know, that and took me like it took me a, a, bit. a few months to be okay with yeah I was like <laughs> taking her she's staying with me and, and you're staying with you know everybody's staying with me uh but no it was really interesting so so like dave's saying he's just saying don't force it on anybody make sure that they're on board that they want to do this that they understand the the depth of it as well and then there are some amazing sanctuaries out there not that that's always everybody's first choice but by all means please have your research done because some are great and some are more Horrible. like a hoarding situation. <laughs> so just yeah. uh, do your research first. I know one in particular that is amazing and it's called Project Perry and it's over in Virginia. So the more you can support places like that, the better because they need the support. They're doing amazing things for birds and um, yeah. And also if it's financially doable for you, set up a trust or I don't know the right, I think it's a trust, but set up an account that can help fund the bird's life, right? After you're gone, if, if that's something that you feel strongly about, that would definitely take some pressure off of some of these sanctuaries if they were getting $300 a month or a year even for that matter, just to help care for your bird. Yeah, many people I know that are just bird <coughs> friends because they're like-minded people have just insured and said, you know, if something ever happens to me, can you guys be in charge of this bird and make sure that it goes to a good home? I want this, this, oh, and great. this. We're going to get a lot of written. emails now. <laughs> <laughs> Choose close friends. But These are no, our close friends I, that are asking us to. I do have this. a girls group, <laughs> and you know we've all talked about it. Just if you know, I have one girlfriend who the rest of her family is just not into the birds, and it's her pride and joy. And so she's always said, if something just happens to me, can you guys please ensure that my bird goes to this required set of like kind of home, you know, and have it written out of what's what you think is in your bird's best interest. You know, an aviary might be ideal for one of your birds and not for the other. So just kind of having it thought out is always a good idea. We actually, I thought about this for the first time when we were in Hawaii and we had that fake missile I was just warning. telling people about that. <clears throat> yeah, and I ended up being like, oh man, if we were all wiped out, I never thought about that. So I, I was like, I don't think anybody would know exactly what to do with all the birds. And so I have it written out how I, how I feel each one would do in it, each scenario. And like, that's the first time I had to sit down and really yeah. think it out if, if you know me and Dave Capri were all gone. If you don't know the story, we were in Hawaii when everybody got the text message that a ballistic missile was inbound and you had 10 minutes before you were dead. So that was, uh, that was quite interesting. It was kind of a blessing in disguise because my mom started Sunday dinners and yeah. weekly coffee dates with me after that. <laughs> <laughs> Only child for the win. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, there's gonna be a lot of people that have some confusion about this and maybe could use your creative help. So if you wanna leave in the comments, where would you give your bird to or what are your plans after you go? Would you be rehoming to your children? Would you be rehoming the bird to a sanctuary? Are you financially setting that bird up for life? Uh, what What is your 
situation you know are you and what's your ideal situation like what does it look like in a perfect world what would you like to see happen yeah or are there sanctuaries that you have personally checked out that are really really good I would be interested in learning more about those yes. because we're always looking for different ways to help sanctuaries, um, whether it's through our fundraisers th from our magic shows. We raise money for uh, a lot of different organizations across the U.S. And, um, and we, we love being able to pair those with master classes too. We love so being able to pair it. Yeah, uh, pair with master classes and consultations. Where we go, <laughs> we try to pair everything together so that we can, you know, put ourselves out there the most. So yeah, I think leaving a comment, you know, spreading the love and the knowledge of the really good places, they they need more recognition. Yes, and more funding. And more funding. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>